Look straight into the person's eyes and tell the person I welcome you in the name of Jesus. Give them a person a, a warm handshake and a real smile. That's why I tell you, sit closer to somebody and so that you can have somebody to smile with this morning. It's, it's summer though, it's a little bit cold, but it will be all right. The rains are going to usher in the sunshine once again and we will be feeling heat. We will turn on our fans and not the heaters in a short while. Amen. Hallelujah. I wish I could have skipped you know, on this subject to uh, try to excite you a little bit and keep you comfortable and keep you loving me, but it doesn't look like I'm able to do that. But he will try to love me anyway. Amen. Because this is an important subject that we have to deal exhaustively so that we can become better citizens of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. At the book of Mark chapter number 10, dealing with the subject of selfishness. Somebody say, say selfishness. Uh, we have tried to deal with this subject. We find it uh, that even it permeates uh, from the beginning uh, by the devil saying, I will exalt myself above the throne of God. We read the book of Isaiah chapter 12 about verse 14 downwards. In the, and we find out all the eye that the enemy, uh, the devil, who was called Lucifer, proclaimed. And so he fell in rebellion out of selfishness and pain. And when he laid man into sin, he laid man into sin through selfishness. Amen. And so we find out that selfishness seems to characterize or becomes a bedrock of every act of uh, sin in our lives. Amen. Uh, when you look at the book of Galatians, I think chapter 2, verse 20, 19 and 20, it says the works of the flesh are manifest, and, you know, drunkenness, and viciousness, and all of those works of the flesh stem from selfishness. Praise the Lord. Uh, but this morning, uh, I want to take uh, our reading uh, from the book of Matt, chapter number 10, uh, reading from about verse 35, Matt chapter 10, the book of Matt chapter 10, book of Mark, not Matthew, that looks like Matthew there, Matt chapter 10, Matt chapter 10. Uh, go a little bit up to, let's go about two or three verses up to 33 or so. Okay, uh, let me read from here to give you some kind of a background because uh, uh, I don't want to cut up this understanding. I'm not going to be long, so you have to be patient with me and the way. And they were in the way going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus went before them, and they were amazed as they followed him. Uh, they were afraid, and they took again the twelve and began to tell them, Watch, yeah, go on, go on, say, We go up, okay, go on, go on, go on to the next place. I'm trying to get to the scripture, go on to the next place. Okay, in verse 35. No, okay, it's fine. And James, somebody say James. Yes. And John, the sons of Zebedee, came unto him. And now let's read it together because I want you to understand it. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came unto him saying, We would that thou should do for us whatever we shall desire. <laughs> now the issue of selfishness is not uh, a new thing. The Bible says two of the disciples who were brothers, James and John, uh, and their father was Zebedee. The Bible said they came to Jesus and said, we, we want you to do something for us. Hello. 
Maybe, maybe say it's not. It's not a long story. A, you may have read this and not really thought about it. Two brothers are in the church of Jesus Christ. Two brothers in the church of Jesus Christ came to Jesus and said, uh, we, "We want you to do something for us. We want you to do something for us." And I thought that they would have discussed this at home. Today, when we get to Jesus, we need to talk to Him. We need to talk to Him. Because you know, uh, you know, Peter is there, Andrew is there, Philip is there. When we get to Jesus, we need to talk to Him. We, we have to discuss this with Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And so the Bible said they came, and watch this. They came and said, Master, we would we will that you should do for us whatever we shall desire. And Jesus said unto them, uh, what would you that I should do for you? What, should, what do you want me to do for you? We want you to do something for us. <laughs> and then this is between Jesus and James and John. And they said unto him, grant us unto us that we may sit one on thy right hand and the other on the left hand in thy glory. See, so, see, so we want to be, you know, uh, we, we, we want you to make us first assistant and my brother's second assistant. <laughs> All of us, you know, from the same, you know, family, we want to be in that position. We love that position. Want it to do for us. Now, these are disciples of Jesus Christ. So, so selfishness do not have color and, and do not have, you know, it's not peculiar to you. Just so that it's not peculiar to you. It manifested. They came to Jesus, two brothers, they came to Jesus and said, We want you to do something for us. Come, Jesus. We, excuse me, Jesus. We want to talk to you for a moment. And Jesus said yes, so we want you to do something for us. And, 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 and this is James and John. And, and he says, exclusive for Jesus. Peter and the rest of them. I want you, Jesus, you know, I want you, you know, John should sit here, I should sit here, you know. <laughs> we want that position. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I'll let you go read the rest of the story. Jesus said, you know, uh, you know I can't, you know, to, uh, you will be baptized. And they said, you know, uh, but Jesus said, you do not know what you ask. Can you drink of the cup that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said, whatever. And they said, unto we can, whatever it is, we want to do it. We want that position for our family. <laughs> we want it for our family. You know, our family in this church, you know, should have that position. In the church of Jesus Christ. Are you here with me this morning? And I, I, I might not be liking me, but this time disciple, they call Jesus a and they so we want it for our family. You no, know, we are, you know, we, we are, our family is many in your church. <laughs> our two sons, you know, uh, they, they would have also discussed it at home. The father would have, Zimini would have said, all of you, my two sons, you are in my Jesus ministry, you got to take some good position there. Okay, now this is what selfishness can do. And then the court, and they, it all, because it's the, now you need to understand, because we all go through this, it did not just drop from the sky. This is a pre discourse you know, issues within the family, and they have the boldness after they encourage, they say, we're going to go talk to Jesus. Excuse me, Jesus, we have something important that <laughs> we need to talk to you about. Uh, please, uh, Jesus, uh, you know, we want to you know, make us, we like for my brother John to sit here and James to sit here. Okay, by the first two rounds, closer to you. And Jesus said, are you able to go through what I go to? They said, we don't mind. We're going to go through. Now, let go up a little bit because you know, I, I want to move on with this. But to sit, Jesus said, you know, okay, well, you guys can do it, but to sit on my right hand or on my left hand is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them 
whom it is prepared. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I have brought up that scripture to show you that selfishness has a tendency to manifest even in the life of those who are close to God. It has a tendency. And if it is not watched in our lives, it will manifest in different. And now that should help you to be able to put your motive on the scrutiny. Whenever there is a desire to do something, you need to be able to put that in the scale of the Word of God to find out if that is out of selfish motive. Because these folks had a good desire, but it was out of selfish motives. It was something that they wanted for themselves. It was something that they wanted for their family. Now, in the book of Luke, chapter 10, I'll be moving on and will be fast. No man, no one is immune to selfishness. Nobody. We see that in, in, in the life of Cain. We see that in the life of uh, uh, Cain rising up to kill Abel. We see that in the book of Genesis chapter 4 verse 9. If, you know, let, let's just look at I mean, um, Luke chapter 10 verse 29. Luke chapter 10 verse 29. 29. Now let's read 28 again. Go to 28. Let's uh, let me just give you a background. Please, 27 might, might help us because you know, I, 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 I like to read, 26, I like to read it so that you can see because, you know, and behold, 25 is good. And behold, a certain lawyer, somebody say, a certain lawyer, stood up and stood in saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life. The last time we read it was not a lawyer, it was a rich person. Now this is a lawyer, this is a well school person. And so what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, what is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered him, and he answered and said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and thou shalt love the near your neighbor as yourself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he, look at that, but he willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Somebody said, who's my neighbor? Who's my neighbor? So, oh, I mean, this guy was a lawyer, so he's trying to put Jesus in a corner. You know, you know. So he, first of all, he came to Jesus, and when he was a lawyer, he was he was somebody that was schooled in the Bible. He knew the dots and the and the tops of the Word of God. He knows every detail. So you now he came, and Jesus said, "Do what the Bible says." What does the Bible say? He said, "Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, and thou shalt love." And the neighbor as yourself said, go to that and say, and he asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? Ask somebody, who is my neighbor? Now, the Bible says, Jesus answered him with this parable and said, and a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his remnant and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance, they came a certain, came down a certain priest. Somebody said a priest. Yes. Now a priest, you know, in the biblical times where this was written, was somebody was, that was highly respected. And the Bible says to them, we are priests and kings unto our Lord, amen. Certain priest came that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Now, this is a definition of who is my neighbor. And likewise, a Levite, a Levite were those who were in charge of the church issues. They were, they were in charge of the church. They, were, they did not know they were full-time ministers. They were full-time ministers. They come from the 
the, 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 the priesthood and when, and when he was at the place came and looked at him and passed on the other side now look at the next verse but a certain Samaritan now the Samaritans were exclusive they were not regarded uh, by the, 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 the Israelites as part of God's covenant people and you understand it now they will not look upon as God's covenant people. They will look upon as the Gentiles, those who were outside covenant relationship with God. So the Bible says that Jesus in this parable said a certain Samaritan came, and when the Samaritan came, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. Go on. And he went to him and bound off his wounds, pouring oil on him and wine and set him on his own beast and brought him to a hotel and inn and took care of him and on the morrow when he departed he took out two pairs and gave them to the host and, and said unto him take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more when I come again I will repay thee and Jesus said which now of these three do you think was the neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves because the priests saw him, the Levites saw him, and the Samaritans saw him. But who took an action? Now, you know, if you look at all of these three categories of people, the one that responded act selflessly. The rest have a capacity to respond, but they did not respond. Are you still here? <laughs> They have the capacity to respond to somebody's need. Now, and Jesus said, who is the neighbor of this person? Because the lawyer was asking for the definition of who is the neighbor. Is it somebody living close to me? Or is it somebody that I know? Now, when you operate in selfishness, you cannot respond to the needs of people. Selfishness does not allow you to respond to the needs of people not to even talk about people you don't know if selfishness cannot allow you to respond to people that you know and people that you meet people at least that you know your name how much more people that you do not know how much more and this is the predicament that we are facing today, that even in our church, we do not respond to the need of others. Because we are selfish in some way. <clears throat> I know that you, I don't expect in, in, in this kind of uh, ministry on Sunday morning at the end of the month, it's okay. But you know, this is, this is what, see, selfishness doesn't allow you to respond to needs even when you have the capacity how many of you ever have the capacity to assist to help and you feel that it did not concern you now I mean, this is not judgmental this i do it sometimes can i have somebody who be a witness who feel like maybe just a human being that you know i, I know i can do it but i won't do it how does it concern me I don't even know him. What if is his faith? We develop theology, we develop concept to, to, you know, to you know, shield ourselves from taking responsibility. The same way the, the, the priest, the same way the Levite shield themselves from taking responsibility when they saw a man who was in him. And Jesus said, who is the neighbor? A neighbor in the sense here is somebody who will selflessly attend to some other person's need. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Ask the person by your side, are you my neighbor? Are you my neighbor? <laughs> will you minister to me in need? That's what you're saying to them. Will you attend to me if I need? Are you my neighbor? No man, I'm not living, I'm living like in Pumalanga, you're living here. What can we be neighbors? <laughs> you're not my neighbor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what selfishness, the way it manifests. Selfishness manifests in those dimensions. And if we do not 
become careful we live a life of selfishness. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what selfish does. Look at the book of 1 Samuel chapter 25. 1 Samuel chapter 25. In this place, the Bible talks about David. David and his men being hungry and they coming to a man who was, whose name was Nebar. And Nebar refused to give David food. And, 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 and I wanted to go back and take a little bit of a snap reading of these scriptures to see some of the consequences and the outcome of this. First Samuel chapter uh, 25 verse 2, if you will read to verse 2 to verse 11. And there was a man in one who had possessions in wicked camel, and the man was very great and has 3,000 sheep and a thousand goats, and he was sharing his sheep in camel. Now, the name of that man was Nebam, and the wife, the name of his wife, Abigail, and he, she was a woman of good understanding and of beautiful countenance, but the man was callous and evil in his doings, and he was of the house of Caleb. Now, sometimes, let me give you a, a counsel, when you read about a person and the Bible begins to give you details about that person, sometimes it's good to make a research about him. And the Bible said this man was of the house of Caleb. How many of you know who Caleb was? Caleb was that guy that stood with Joshua. He was a faithful man, but this man, the Bible said he was evil and he had so much. He has so much. And David heard in the wilderness that Nebal did share his sheep. And David sent out ten young men. And David said unto the young men, Get you up to Camel and go to Nebal and greet him in his in my name. And thou shalt do something that lives in prosperity. Be Peace be unto thee, and peace be unto thy house, and peace be unto all that thou hast. And now I have heard that thou hast shared now thy shepherds which were with us. We, we heard them not. Neither was they out missing unto them all the while the way in Canaan. Now David, you know, as a soldier, had a team of soldiers. And this man had all his stuff in this battlefield, but David protected them. And they had the right to be able to take it by force because they were soldiers and they were hungry. But now he sent them in peace to go and ask him to be able to give them something to eat. And the man refused out of selfishness. And the Bible says when he did that, David got angry. I'm just kidding, you go read this. He got angry and he would have gone there to deal with him as a soldier would demand in the, in the state that he was in. But the Bible said the wife, Abigail, was, you know, a woman of wisdom. He took the food, knowing about David, and went behind and settled David and saved David from the anger of committing abomination and killing them. But in time passed, because of Nebuchadnezzar's selfishness, he died. Still somebody, selfishness kills. Selfishness kills. He died because of selfishness. He owns too much. It doesn't share. You know, there is no joy that you have things you don't share. There is no joy in possessions if others are not blessed. True prosperity in Christ is you having it and becoming a channel of blessing. Amen. Now, why I say selfishness kills because if a pipe is supposed to bring water and there is a blockade for the water to flow, then you will get stopped up and bust. 
So when there is selfishness, we store so much things in our life and it busts us. But if it flows, because God never wants to bless you only, he said to Abraham, I will bless you and I will make you a blessing. The next level, the greatest level of blessing is becoming a blessing himself. To be blessed is good, but the best of it all is to be a blessing. You see, if you are blessed, you can come to the point where you lack. There are people that are blessed, but sometimes they experience scarcity. But when you become a blessing, you can never experience scarcity. So, you know, we pray to be blessed. But I believe that the best that you can pray is to be a blessing. Because you, know, you can have money and you still be broke at the end of the day. Your money can finish, you can be blessed today and you become a millionaire. And at the end of the day, you're broke. Because you were blessed and you have it and it finishes. And you have to constantly. You see, when you are blessed, you constantly look for more. But when you are blessing, you become contented. Because uh, you, when you are blessing, you become a channel where blessing passes through. So you can never lie. Somebody said it this way, the pipe that brings water to your house can never be tested. Where is the water going to pass through? If I become a channel of blessing, there is no way I'm going to lie. So our greatest pursuit should not be to be blessed but to become a source of blessing. Because when you become a source of blessing, God continually sends it through you and you will never be in lack. Hallelujah. Amen. But selfishness, you know, hearts, hold things back. We got it. Oh, and we relax. Say, no ways. You guys are not going to get this one. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. This is my own. And you begin to block people on the cell phone. I block you. I delete you. Because just because you get blessed. No, God did not bless you for yourself. God blesses you to become a channel of blessing. And when you become a channel of blessing, you will never lack the whole of your life. And your generations will never lack. Hallelujah. Amen. But selfishness wants us to hoard. Selfishness want to say we have arrived, cut them off. You begin to remember your enemies. People offended you sometime. How many of you are here? How many of you remember your enemies sometimes? Oh no, I don't have good witnesses. You begin to remember your enemies. If your uncle was your enemy, you would go to visit him to bluff. Hello. You go to visit your uncle. Just let him see. Because when you were in school, you refused to pay your school fees. Yes. <laughs> and now you're going to go show him yes. that God is good. Yes. <laughs> and you just don't drop nothing. Just, you know. And, and the man. He does not even remember that he didn't pay your school fees when you so much did it. But you remember it. I'm not there right now. You remember it. And you go and say, Uncle, I came to greet you. And the man is so happy, he knows that he's hoping that something will drop. And in your heart, you say, I just want to show you that I have to you. And you leave the place without even a cent. Leave the place. Say, no, uncle, I just wanted to come and greet you. Vroom, 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 and, you take <laughs> and when uncle saw you, there was hope that you have come. My brother's son is here. He's going to help me. But you are having it in your mind. That's only selfishness. Selfishness. One of the greatest manifestations of selfishness is unforgiveness. The only reason we 
cannot forgive is not because we were offended. It's because we are selfish. Because there is something in us. It's all about us. I said it last Wednesday that, you know, even in the level of unforgiveness, we have a team. <laughs> team of people to support group, our fans. You know, if you offend me, I tell my people, and they also get offended with you. How many of you have this kind of group? I said you should pray about on Wednesday. <laughs> You offend me. I went and tell her when they see you, say, we know what you did to him. <laughs> they also told you to become offended without me. How many of you have those fans in your side? Come on now, come on. Come on. You know, when anything that goes wrong, if somebody touch you, you don't even answer them. You tell your group. And they become a blockade. They begin to toy toy with the person. You know what you say. You know what you say. And the person was not even there. How did you know what I said? No, because I am a fan of this brother. I'm a fan of this sister. We all protest. We all become protesters. We all toy toy against you. You know what you're doing. You know what you say. And then we create division. You know how that happens? It's because of selfishness. Because we are selfish, we want it on our own part. Hallelujah. Amen. The only way you can learn to forgive is when you are selfless. When it is no longer about you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And I said it last week and I'm emphatic that, you know, uh, one of the greatest teachings in the Bible is on forgiveness. And if forgiveness does not become part of our lives, our relationship with God is not functioning. Because our relationship with God is made by our relationship with one another. I'm keeping quiet now. I'm looking at the time because the way you are quiet, you know, I want to be able to close because I don't want anybody to be offended. <laughs> But, but this is the truth. If you want to know how functional and how healthy is your relationship with God, do not go praying and binding the devil and killing him. Just begin to look around in your circle. How many people are you still holding unforgiven? Because the Bible says if you don't forgive, God will not forgive you. And the Bible says if you even bring an offering to the church and you remember that you, know, you have something against an issue in your life with your brethren that you should leave the offering and not even try to offer, go back and sort it out. So the measurement of our healthy relationship with God is the measurement of our relationship with one another. It has to do with the heart. And when God wants to measure us, He does not measure our height, He measures our heart. So when we come to God and we come and we stand before Him, you should look into your heart and say, I hope there is nobody offended in me and there's nobody that I have offended. That would be a true way of assessing what's like nobody offended it, you know, because sometimes you know uh, you might be offending somebody and you just don't care. Yeah. I don't owe them anything. How many people said that before? I don't owe them anything. Don't even know them. But you get offended. So if you are able to get to them and relate with them properly, you should be able to come back and relate to God. And our relationship with God is more important than our relationship with men. But it is nature 
destroyed by our relationship with man. Because God, we do not see. Now, that takes me to the scripture that I'm closing with shortly in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 10. Hebrews chapter 10. And, and this is why, you know, when people leave the church, it is not because the church is not of a necessity good, but it's always out of selfishness. Hebrews chapter 10. Look at verse 24. In this 24 to 25, in these two verses is the antidote for a selfishness in the church, the solution how we should be able to deal with it. Hebrews chapter 10, and let us consider, somebody said consider, consider. one another to provoke unto love and good work. Let us consider one another. Tell somebody consider one another. Consider one another. To provoke unto love and good works. In the next verse, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exalting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Let us consider. In reality, the, the, the issue of our, our life is spent in two activities. We are either assembling ourselves with the members of the, of, the, of the assembly of the church or the ecclesia, in which case we are tempted to apply the principle of truth, which we have learned in our unnecessary we coming together. As new creatures in Christ, striving to overcome selfish tendencies, it is evident that we should be involved in stimulating one another towards righteousness and self-sacrifice. And it is only by counterbalancing the effect of obedience to God, prosperity, and study, and sharing of experience with our brothers that we will be able to derive strength to enable us to overcome the world, the flesh, and the anniversary. In short, selfishness. What a wonderful blessing it would be reading straight from my notes, as I put it. Of those who hold welfare foremost in their heart, none of the none of us is too strong that we can stand alone. There is nobody that can stand alone in Christ. There is no lone rangers in Christ. We need each other. Tell somebody we need each other. We need each other. Look at your neighbor. Say, I need you. I need you. Tell that person you need me. You need me. There is no body that can stand alone. We need each other. Whenever I even any act, when I talked on the tenants the other time, I told you about that the working teams. In this scripture that we read, the first word is let us do what consider one another. Now the, the matter of considering one another implies careful study of those in our church. We need to study each other. Tell someone we need to study each other. That's the meaning of the word consider. It means study one another. We need to study to know each other. We need to know each other. Tell somebody we need to know each other. We need to know each other. It is good that we know each other's name, but that's not what it is. Not until you stand in my circle, then you find out that you know all that work was in the church. I tell you why. Yeah. We need to study each other, and know their temperaments, know how who they are. It is good we know each other's name. My name is, uh, you know, Teddy Tope. I don't know whether it's a name that you know. I don't know where that comes from. But you know, whatever is your name, John or Peter. But you know, how do we know each other? How many of you ever surprised that you thought you know? I thought I know him. How many of you say something? I thought I really know him. Because you were so close and you thought that you know the person. 
not until something happens. And then you say, I'm surprised at you. <laughs> I'm surprised. How many of you have people that you thought you know surprise you before? They begin to do things and you say, ah, hey, you know, I thought I really know. But now I don't know. So now knowing each other is a process of study. It's not something that you, okay, my name is Michelle Castle, and the church is smart. Get into my circle, there are some places you get in this area you step into and you find out that I thought he was a pastor. <laughs> He's always smiling, but the way I see him that day, I don't even think he was born me. I just saw that you didn't know me. You just thought that you know me. So the issue of knowing each other is a process of study. So when the Bible says, let us consider, it means let us study one another. It implies a careful study of those in our fellowship. We must be students of ourselves as well as students of the scripture. There are two levels of study when you come to church. The one we don't like is the one of studying one another. We like to study the Bible. And we all know the Bible, but we never know each other. But the first process, there are two levels of study, and that's why some folks leave the church. Because they thought they knew. And then they all of a sudden, you know what? Everybody is fake. <laughs> <laughs> Subject. I'm going to study you. I'm going to try to know you. So I know how to deal with you. I'm being when you come. We all think that, oh, we are all born again and know we are spirit filled. And we try to deal with each other the same way. No, it's not like that. We need to study. Somebody should give your hand to shake. Because the last time they shake somebody's hand, your hand became painful. <laughs> 
when that comes to church and you're all shaking, 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 he gives his hands up. Yes, I do. <laughs> and you wonder why he's not shaking people. No, you need to study. Hello. Tell somebody, study somebody. Study somebody. You need to study one another and find out where she or he is coming from and what has happened so that you can best know how to prevent the person unto good works and unto love. That's why the Bible says, let us consider. The word consider means to study in the original translation. We need to study. We need to study each other. Because we all come from somewhere. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We must be students of our brethren as well as students of the scripture in order to be a blessing to them. Each of us has various personalities, peculiarities, and imperfections. When interacting with our brethren, our sensitivity and the spirit of sound mind should guide us. We should be able to study each other. Tell somebody study one another. Study one another. Hallelujah. We need to study each other. We need to be able to come to each other and get close enough to know so that you know you know why I'm talking with a loud voice. Hallelujah. You need to know. How many of you ever seen that children answering the phone? <laughs> <laughs> you need to study them. You don't just need to do that. They don't care who where you are. Hello! <laughs> And people get offended with that. You need to study the way they're coming from. <laughs> Don't just get offended. Hello, what are you saying? Hey, uh -huh. hey. <laughs> 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 you just get offended. And you say, this <laughs> And you, no, you need to study. <laughs> study where they come from. Find out how they talk. How many of you ever see them in discussion? They just discuss about football and you can call 10 people for the things that they're fighting. <laughs> hey, look, why are you not like that? Hey, you come up. I thought they were fighting. You see that they're like this. No, no, Jesus, it's not you. They need to stop. That's somebody you need to stop. You say, if they come among you, you know, they're starting them. Amen. Because we have perfections. Peculiarities and differences. You need to study. Somebody says study. Study. I will go to the next one next time. Stand on your feet. My time is up. Hallelujah. Yeah. If we're going to deal with one another, you need to study. Hallelujah. Yeah. You need to study people from Pumalanga, how they behave. When they come to church, you need to study people from Eastern Cape, how they behave. People from Limpopo. Not my brother. <laughs> from the other people, <laughs> people from Sakane, how they behave when they come to church. No, how they you need to study. Hello. Don't just assume. If we're going to be able to love one another and provoke one another, we need to study. As we study the Word of God, we need to study. The relationship is based on knowledge. True and successful relationship is based on. There cannot be a true and successful relationship when we don't know each other. When husband and wife come together, they need to study. There is something that we need to know about each other beyond love. I love you does not cover every every other thing. How many of you realize that? I love you. Otherwise, before you know, you think that your wife is the devil or your husband is the devil. That you say, I have seen the devil with my guru guru eyes. <laughs> I do many naked eyes. I've seen the devil. I've seen, I have seen. I have seen the devil with my eyes. Where did you see that? It's with me. How come? Where did you get the devil? No, you just need to study one another. That's what they say. Consider one another. Lift up your hands. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If we're going to be able to succeed with our relationship with one another, with one another we need to study. I just want you to ask the Lord for wisdom. Wisdom in my relationship. Every one of us are in a relationship. Somehow, somehow. Relationship within the church. Relationship at the workplace. Relationship within our communities. We all relate. Father, give me wisdom. Let me be and let us pray. Ask for wisdom. Ask for some mind to be able to deal with one another. Father, in the name of 
name of Jesus Christ of the dead. We are trying to be selfless. We are trying to follow your glory, God. But Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, and that many a times we will break from the position of self. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I need many a times in our decision making process. The flesh, the flesh, otherwise the self, leave us instead of the world, instead of the Spirit of God. Many 99% of the time we will break down of our flesh. But this is not your desire for us. The Bible says when we walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the desires of our flesh or our self. Lord, we should be able to come to the flesh when we say, let your will be done. No matter what it is in our lives. Therefore, I pray for every man and every woman under the sound of my voice this morning. That the self will die. The Bible says, if we operate in the flesh, we are enemies of God. I pray for us, O oh God, as a church, that our flesh, our self, be not crucified. in the power of God. Thank you, my dear Father. Thank you, because this is our desire. This is our desire. We pray, O God, as we have heard this word today, let this word never depart from us, O God. Let your spirit use this word to teach us. Even those whom we have been in offense, we will be able to go and reconcile with them. Those who have, we have been in unforgiveness and bitterness against or with, we will be able to let go so that you will come in us. And then we will be able to manifest your essence in us. The glory and the grace that has bring us salvation. Father, we pray concerning the entire church that this church will become a, a kingdom citizen's church. A church that is, you know, filled with kingdom citizens living kingdom life. And manifest in Christ that when people come in here, they will meet with the real people. And they will meet with Christ in us, who is the hope of our glory. Thank you, mighty Father. I bless every woman, I bless every man. Bless every boy and girl. I bless every person under the sound of the voice who have been following this teaching today. Lord, even as we continue to live into the end, by the time we finish of God, let every self in us die. And the glory and the grace. That is in us through Christ Jesus will come to full manifestation. And we will become rivers of living water. For the Bible says, out of the belly of them that believe shall flow rivers of living water. That the water of life in us through Christ Jesus can flow. And then we will breathe and be saved. Thank you, mighty Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all the saints say, Amen. Amen. And all the saints say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated.